Okay, I'm gonna try this again. I've tried to make this day three video like 10 times now. Uh, the reason it's difficult is I'm trying to summarize such a complex idea. In fact, it's probably a book which <laughs> I'm gonna write, right? Um, because it's, it's, it literally makes the most sense. I'm going to go over a little concept ahead of where I'm going to dive into, okay? And the reason for it is you need to understand, if you're a business owner, this framework, okay? So day three... What we're actually going to talk about today is we're going to talk about bandwidth. All right? Different definitions for that. What I want you to consider is bandwidth being all of the accessible time energy in your organization, in your business. That's processes. That's like how long certain like pieces of technology take to do something and also human beings, right? Their bandwidth, human bandwidth. There's a lot of little sub definitions we can go into, but this one is always, so the PPT framework, if you're un unaware of what that is, is your people, your process, and your technology. All right, really easy, really easy. What you want <laughs> is absolute, you want no lag, right? No bandwidth lag. That's one thing we're gonna talk about right here, right? What you do want, you do want, is bandwidth optimiza optimization, right? That's a do. What you don't want, so these are the these are the pro <laughs> and these are the cons, right? Okay. Obviously you don't want lag. You want optim optimization. I'm gonna go pro and con, whatever. Let's just say the positives and the negatives. <laughs> okay? People, processes, and technology. Now, these, the technology is are the tools. Some might argue that the process is the tools, but the process is basically your operations or the do. You know what I mean? Let's go with your ops, right? And then the people is pretty obvious. Now, if they're all connected, well, when things move, but like if a person activates a process using a technology, you want that to be as efficient as possible. That's what I, I remember. I said I hate the word efficiency, but what I'm saying is you want to make sure that you have that so figured out that there isn't any lag, right? Optimization, right? Not lag. And I think a lot of people out there are not calculating their bandwidth. This is, the, this is the thing. The reason why I want to get into day three being bandwidth is because bandwidth makes you money, if you understand it, saves you time and, and also saves you money. It, 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 it's a genius idea if you look at human inclusive, right? Because I'm gonna write a word on here that I hate as well. These are my, just this word, agile. Oh God, <laughs> It's, um, it's another one of those, it's another lip service. It's a paying lip service. People say it thinking that they understand what it is. I think just to shut people up or to shut themselves up because they don't know how else to lie anymore to everybody that they've told their business is where it should be, which is wrong, right? So they basically use this as a defensive defense mechanism. You're agile, which would mean that you can pivot you can change things on the fly, and therefore you don't have to have, like, you can scale up and scale back. Scale up and scale back, right? Based on, like, if you have humans, right? If you have a team, 
Agile is very important with a team because otherwise what you're doing as a business owner is you're buying human time and that's expensive. It's expensive. So like every time you go plus one human or whatever that is, it could equal $100,000 a year, right? I don't know why I always go to 100,000. I think it's just because mathematically it's easier to divide. But you see where I'm going with this, right? This, this is costly. This is very costly. So optimize your human bandwidth. So then you know exactly how much is being used, right? And this is where it gets good. Because if you're not using technology, then you can't digitally manage human bandwidth. There's no way. There's no possible way. What you will be doing is hoping for the best. Right? Like, like, you know, if say, for example, you were doing something in field service and I, and it's great because I have experience building field service businesses as well as pure digital startups, etc. So if you think about this, let's say you have a field service business and you're supposed to do something and it's outdoors and it's raining, right? Like you will say that you're being agile by just canceling the day or finding everybody other things to do that they can do while it's raining. That's a good example. But... As far as other than just, you know, canceling and re putting people in different places to do other things, that's about all you got, right? That's about all you got, right? Because you already have those people and you're not going to lay off people for one day, right? That's like where this starts to get strange for a lot of businesses because this whole concept of like moving people in and out of positions inside your business just because they're there already. That's why they don't want to work for you. If you start giving people responsibilities in any job that they don't feel are the ones that they signed up for, especially after where we've been through as a society through this pandemic and such, the great resignation, they know their options. They've thought about it a long time. These, they're like, oh, my boss is an asshole and I don't like my job. There's so many things that you can imagine that just putting another reason for them to move along somewhere else, that might be giving them responsibilities that they didn't sign up for, right? Which would be abusing human bandwidth, abusing their bandwidth, right? So you don't want bandwidth abuse, <laughs> right? You want optimization, you don't want lag, you don't want it, but you don't want abuse. Most bandwidth abusers are looking at bandwidth in the wrong light. What they do is it's that you're already there, so do this. You know what I mean? Like, it's basically, we're already paying you, so what's the difference? You're already here. You're already here. That's where it starts to get abusive. Or, say for example, you project as a business owner on your team what how you would work so if you work like a dog 20 hours a day you would expect that whoever works for you has that same due diligence and that same work ethic uh, and that's projection right they might they might still be an awesome awesome employee but what you're doing is you're projecting on them your ability to you know cash out and cash in time in the ways they wouldn't. And that's day one, what we talked about in day one, which is time and money, right? So if you think that they're going to do the same thing as, as that you do with, you, with your, their bandwidth, that you do with your bandwidth, you're, you're, you're out of your mind, not anymore, right? And that work hard, I, I get it, I get it. I totally know where people are gonna argue about that. However, if they know there's a smarter way to do it, and you as the owner aren't giving them the right tools and process and technology, right? You don't have the process documented and you don't, you're not giving them the best technology. Something that they know they can use that would expediate something that they're doing manually or they're doing with an older technology. Well, you're ripping them off in somewhere that they can, and they want to give that bandwidth to that process the same way that you would. But you as the owner are willing to use those 20 hours in a day without the tricks and the shortcuts and the best techs. Whereas they're like, but if you were using the best tricks and the shortcuts and the best techs, that might only be a 10 hour day. So then you're projecting 20 hours on a person that knows that they should be able to do it in 10. That's bad with abuse right there. And you better figure this stuff out because we're in the great resignation, right? We're, we're, we're at the point in time where keeping and finding good people and keeping them 
is going to be the hardest thing. Like, I have three things I'll talk about in a different day, but I'm telling you right now that I, I quote me, I swear by it, it, it's not, the human resource problem is only gonna get worse. And the owners that don't learn this now will be fucking frustrated for as long as they still work. Okay, it's like, whoa, I'm already seeing it. I know, that's why I'm so confident. I know, I've seen it, I've interviewed it. It's just done, right? It's like, it's like a whole new world and it's because you need to change. Like, this, right, this is the problem. You look at, well, like, why would I need to learn about human bandwidth? I know what I'm doing already. Why would I need to know about it? Well, unfortunately, the person you're gonna be hiring is different now. So their, expect, their expectations are not the same as what you have as your expectations. So you have to learn the new language of work, right? For them to, and then they'll come in droves if you figured this out. They'll come in droves, like, they'll be like, cause, cause I'm, it's gonna be a 90, 10. There's gonna be 90% businesses that don't know what this is. And those businesses, people will not wanna work for. I don't care how much you pay them. Money doesn't mean the same thing it used to prior to pandemic. People are way more willing to take a pay cut for, to eliminate bandwidth abuse, right? So like, if you think the 90, 10, that means 10% of these businesses, 10% of these businesses that figured this out have access to the best team, like the best. And so when you think you're not getting them, like when you start like building a team, a new team, you start, you know, adding to your team, you know, flushing people out of your team, putting new people in their place, whatever, and it's still not working for you, it might be because you don't get it. It might be because you don't get it. You're not advertising to your, your HR that you want them, you want people that understand that you and them are on the same team with bandwidth, okay? I digress a bit. Let's go with this understanding, uh, and like, let's add some more words here. Okay, let's add distortion. Bandwidth distortion, which what I would consider probably easy to understand, but it's not exactly forward inside an organization right now. That's where everybody knows what everybody's doing. Okay, like there's no, there's no like guessing. There's no guessing. Guessing and such causes this distortion, especially business to business when the technologies don't match, right? Like say one business is super forward that uses Slack or Microsoft Teams, and the other one just uses email. Well, who's going to be faster waiting to communicate with the other? The business that's not using those technologies is going to be slower, but they're happy in that ecosystem they created because it does what they think it does enough. So then when you have a better business that's more forward talking to a slower business, you can see that there's a lot of distortion there. Distortion happens internally as well. It does happen internally, and it's easily solved by transparency, right? Bandwidth transparency is like, that's my, that's my go-to. Bandwidth transparency is, could solve so many of the world's problems. What it is, is it's basically your team knowing what each other is doing, right? What they're doing like you, and then kind of how long it takes, usually they actually, actually how long it takes, and that when and when, when they're doing it. And say for example, you're using like a project management utility, that's just the tip of the iceberg. Say you were using Calendly for Teams. Well now you can have a shared calendar that's inside the Calendly ecosystem, and also each person can see each other's schedules and calendars, controlled through that whole organization of yours. That's amazing. That's amazing. Like, you want to know what that solves? Where a lot of this time that just, this, as I always say, this luxurious time you just have lying around, a lot of bandwidth transparency can introduce the concept that I call check first, ask second. We don't even need the plus sign because I would I would say check first x a second. That's what bandwidth transparency also, you know, helps with. Is this 
Because now it's like you don't have to like spend all this time running up everybody's bandwidth selfishly just to try to find out the answer to something or just to try to find out or try to solve a problem instantaneously for yourself. Like any business that gets this saves on so much that they don't bloat. And they may actually, here's the thing, if you are, you, if you are basically really focusing on this framework, right, and you're, you've got all the best tech, your processes are tight as fuck, right, and the people you have want to work for you, get it, and, they're, and they understand all this that we just discussed. They, you know, like they're trying, they're preventing lag, they're preventing distortion, and they're preventing internally abuse, and you're not abusing them. They're focused on optimization for you on the inside of the business as the owner, right? Bandwidth transparency makes them fucking happy, right? This right here cuts down on a ton, a ton of labor, a ton of unnecessary information gathering right there. And then what happens is you may actually, I may agree that you were an agile business. Because the analytics you could pull off of if, you, if you're already in a digital, as much digital as possible, that means you're as much real time as possible. That means the dashboards are available to you because you're using the right softwares and the right app stack, et cetera, right? And so you may actually be able to predict the future in terms of your labor. You pull back, scale back, scale up, scale back, scale up. I would be, I'd almost give you that. I'd almost give you that because that's all it would take, right? That's all it would take. Just a little bit of agility <laughs> can change a lot, especially pre-pandemic, during pandemic, whatever, you know? And that's what I want to say about that. I really want to drill down into more bandwidth. So this is day three, the beginning of understanding of human bandwidth. That's all. There's so much to know. I mean, I, I really try to keep it as fast as possible but yeah we're going to talk about bandwidth again and i might just jump into another video because i like where i want to go will be where uh, like immediately if you grasp this concept it will bring you to the next level